Okay everyone, a lot of people have uh, been asking me to do a drawing tutorial for uh, the first few lectures in my, my Game 105 class. So this is, uh, this is the gist of it. I'm going to try to give you as much as I do in class, although I do tend to talk a lot in class and I'm going to avoid some of the more philosophical lectures. Uh, I may try to do a separate video for that sort of art discussion stuff another time. Uh, but in terms of what you need to get done for the assignment, scribbling with purpose, that's what I like to call it. It's uh, basically the same thing that most people call gesture drawing, um, but scribbling with purpose is my fun description for it. So that's what we'll do. Um, and then later on I will describe how to do the silhouette process that I just started incorporating into this uh, lecture as well. So um, right off the bat, you'll notice I have Photoshop open. I have a canvas that is, if you go to File New, 1920 by 1080 pixels. Make sure it's pixels, not inches, or else your computer may burst into flames. Uh, so a 1920 by 1080 pixel canvas. I've gone to Google and I've Googled sports photography. Uh, we just want a nice reference photo to work from. Uh, if you want to get into concepting uh, and drawing from, from your imagination, that's a whole other crazy story which involves a lot more knowledge of anatomy than you may have right now. So uh, to keep it simple, again, a very beginner class. I'm not expecting miracles of artwork, but I want to give you the, the, the rough basis for how to uh, start to block in shapes and, and, and make, uh, make a decent drawing using the gesture technique. It's not going to be a, uh, we're not going to get to a finished result, but that's okay. Uh, we just want to learn how to loosen up and explore this stuff. And it's going to be a real mental shift for a lot of people. Um, I want to show you how to draw the way you should draw and then I'll show you what not to do if you want to get a decent grade from my class. Okay, so I chose this image uh, because it looked kind of fun um, and it, it's I'm going to leave that up. Normally I work out with dual monitors and I would just drag it into the other monitor but uh, since uh, I want you guys to see what I'm looking at as I sketch I'm going to leave this up. Um, okay, so let's just get started. Now the thing is, the idea is you really want to keep the flow turned down, you want to keep a, a very sharp point, and uh, basically uh, you want it to mimic uh, what a pencil would be doing. So I'm going to keep the flow down and I'm just going to start to start to rough in these shapes. Now I'm looking at this guy at the moment and I'm, I'm just trying to analyze how these surfaces are turning and uh, and you'll notice it's very loose and scribbly but the scribbles should be mimicking, as I'm looking at the reference, the, my scribbles should be mimicking basically the, uh, the curvature of the surfaces uh, so that I, I come up with uh, something more accurately resembling the form and not an outline. I don't want outlines. Uh, and then some of this I may have to, to clean up a little bit. Uh, if it gets a little too muddy, you, you, you're working on this and it gets a little too muddy, sometimes you gotta you gotta do a little bit of erasing. But try to avoid erasing as much as you can. Because um, when you erase you're you're destroying your thought process and then you can't see uh, you can't see where you went wrong to be able to correct it. That's what the scribbling is it's more of an exploration and you want to be able to see your mistakes so that you can so that you can uh, see where they went wrong and correct them. Um, and that is one of the things what's critical about this process is you need to learn to be comfortable with making mistakes right off the bat um, is another thing to, to keep in mind be comfortable learn to be comfortable with making mistakes because it happens and that's part of the process you need to make mistakes start to imply this uh, this other guy's arm here and and by the way it's Photoshop and it's Photoshop's fantastic because you can correct your mistakes pretty easily without necessarily having to start over or or erase. You can you just you can marquee select stuff uh, and move it around. And I'm I'll probably show you that in a minute because I have a feeling that I'm gonna have to clean up some of this. Uh, I feel like the proportions are already kind of off a little bit. It's really easy to start to start having proportions go wrong. And again, Photoshop, awesome because you don't have to start over or erase stuff or redraw it. You just you just have to. Uh, just uh, marquee select something, scale it down, transform it, whatever. Uh, makes makes life a lot easier drawing digitally. Makes it speeds up your should speed up your process quite a bit if you get once you get comfortable with it. 
So again, you, you can see kind of how this form is developing um, as I go. And it's very loose. It's very scribbly. I want to see these scribbles. Uh, I, I don't want to see line art. Uh, line art is, is, is in, in the case of this class, it's wrong. <laughs> Uh, and let me do let me do a little bit of cleanup now when I, when I do some if I do any erasing any cleanup I'm going to go to the eraser tool the E key right here and I'm going to turn the flow way down because I just want to lighten up it's just getting a little bit muddy and there's also some overlapping forms that I need to uh, to erase a little bit because this this hand is clearly in front of this guy's face mask so I'm gonna I'm gonna try to imply the palm there, and get a little bit of the 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 arc right there with the thumb and the fingers. So just to make sure that I have that um, in front of the helmet, uh, and then then I'm gonna come back and come back here, and then now this this arm comes out into this helmet, and I'm looking at the negative space a lot here too. There's a negative space right here that is really critical for making sure that these these uh things all line up properly. So if I get that, if I nail that negative space, then everything else should fall into place a little bit easier. So again, his helmet kind of comes down like this. Maybe scaled a little bit too big, but we'll see. I can always adjust that if, if it's wrong. But he is a little closer to the camera. He's a little bit closer to the camera, so the scale could be a little bit larger, but again, I can always adjust. So shoulder pads coming out here. His arm comes down. Uh, and again, notice um, there's directionality, but then there's also form to the scribbles. Uh, I'm 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 nailing the direction, and then I'm trying to nail the uh, then I'm trying to nail the 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 curvature. Like the the forearm obviously is going to be a rounded surface. The bicep round it's rounded this direction. So look for the directionality of it, and then also the uh, also the form the the surface of it. it it's going to have uh, it's going to have definition and form. So then I'm looking at the, the football here, kind of has this angle, and then obviously a football shape. I'll round that out a bit more. Got a little bit muddy, a little bit too muddy, trying to trying to find that form. Sometimes if you're if you if you're struggling with trying to find the shape for a little too long, it gets muddy. But you know, no problem. Just just again, if you're gonna use the eraser, use it lightly so I can still see where those mistakes were, so I don't make the same mistakes. Uh, and then kind of imply the hand there, get that. Now I've been spending a little bit too long, I've been going a little bit too, uh, I've been breaking some of my own rules and spending a little bit too long in certain areas. You want to move around the composition a little faster usually because um, you don't want to get stuck in one area. You don't want to get one area looking really good but then the rest of the comp or the rest of the proportions look retarded because you you spent too long on one spot. So, so move through the composition. Again, I'm going to try to, now I'm going to try to move through the rest of this guy's uh, shirt, his hips. He's got one leg coming out this way because he's in, in the process of running. And again, very much an exploration. You shouldn't. You should be comfortable making mistakes, knowing that it's kind of some of it's going to come out wrong. And you just that's what the beauty of scribbling. It's it's automatically a mistake. You just have to repeat it and just go over it until it comes out uh, with the right answers. So uh, get comfortable with making mistakes. Now this shoulder comes down a little bit farther, um, and then the bicep there. Then I then I uh, originally was looking at it. This is, this is a little bit too much of a torso here. It's a little too big there. So I'm going to try to back that off. In fact, I'll also kind of just bring this whole back side. I need to clean that. This whole area needs to scoot back here because because this is too big. In fact, and I'll take it this direction as well. He was getting he was just getting a little too wide. So pull this down a bit, because yeah, the face mask comes down like that, and then this is like that. So there's a little, there, it's a little bit better, a little less wide. Going back to, to scribbling again, make, keeping it scribbling. Shoulder pads don't come out quite as far. That feels a little bit better. Uh, overall, I think I might have exaggerated the perspective a bit. I feel like I exaggerated the perspective a bit where this guy feels a lot um, a lot larger than he should. In fact, first of all, the helmet is the helmet's where I started, and that's probably uh, because I started the helmet too large. I think everything else, the rest of him followed um, followed suit and kind of became too large as well. Um, 
So that's what happens. That's what happens when you work when you work on one area too long before moving on to the rest is your proportions get off. Uh, so you got to try to travel around the composition uh, quickly so that your brain doesn't have time to lock in one particular thing bef uh, and you want to keep it loose. All right, so um, basically this is the gist of it. And, and this is, uh, again, scribbling with purpose. You, you see the forms. You see, like, okay, this is a, this is a, a thigh, right? Well, the, the thigh is going to have some curving surfaces like that. Now, notice I'm not even looking at lighting at all right now. There's no issue. There's, I haven't even applied any sort of lighting. There's no lighting here. There's no shading. There's no, there's no filling in of, of any sort of surfaces. I'm not even looking, okay, like, I mean, obviously there's like a, a three here. Um, you know, the number three here. I haven't looked at texture. I haven't looked at, at, at symbols or, or, or anything like that. You know, there's a three here. Um, I haven't even started trying to add any of that in, and it's not necessary yet uh, because uh, this is just exploring the forms, the overall like shapes. And why is that important for, for this class? Because guess what? We're going to be using Maya and a lot of 3D applications. And if you're doing a, if you're using a 3D application, guess what's really important? You know, 3D modeling is exploring forms and creating forms in the computer. You need to be able to be conscious of the, the three-dimensional surfaces. Um, okay, so this is enough on this drawing. This actually is as far as I would really want you to take a drawing for my class for this assignment. Um, I don't want a fully rendered drawing. I don't want lighting. I don't want shading. I don't want anything of that nature. Uh, this is as far as you should really take this drawing. Um, give me the scribbles. If you do want to finish the drawing and make it make it awesome, that's great. Do it on another layer. Again, here oh here's the layers palette for those of you that aren't Photoshop savvy. If you turn on the layers palette, window layers, uh, I have it off on my other monitor, but here's the layers palette. And if you want to create a new layer, hit this icon, start a new layer, and then draw. Like if you want to shade, okay, well now I want to shade. Okay, great. Um, maybe turn your brush size up. Keep the flow down. Start. Oops. Thanks. Brush high, or flow is way too high, I guess. Keep the you know flow down. Maybe maybe even turn the color down a little bit. Uh, anyways, eesh. turn the opacity down as well. All right, let's try that. All right, good enough. Whatever. So. Um, Play around with that if you like, it, but again, if, if you want to do that, do it on another layer, and you will be turning in your, your Photoshop documents to me, so um, so I will I will check. I want to see the scribbles. The scribbles, if you have a math class, if you've ever taken a math class, you know how the teacher says, show your work. Show your work. I want to see your work. Well, this is the equivalent of that. Show, showing your work in drawing is, is the equivalent is basically showing me that uh, your scribbles. I want to see your thought process for this uh, for this scenario. Uh, whatever. Okay, but again, I don't want to see the shading um, if you, unless you're really, really determined to do it. Do it on another layer so that I can so that I can turn it off and see your scribbles underneath. I need to see your work. Okay. Um, uh, I will start another video in a minute that will. Uh, a lot of people want to see how I do use this process for landscapes. Uh, I will block in a landscape for you guys so you guys can. Uh, Get the gist of that, um, and like I said, a lot of the uh, a lot of the stuff in my on-campus lectures that involves like the, the philosophy of art and and uh, some ad personal advice on how to be a good artist. I will try to make a video at some point, just because I want to share that with some of the people that don't have my class or miss the class, you know, for absence reasons or whatever. Okay, um, so if you have any questions, you know, if you're in my class, email me uh, or post comments, whatever. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this, and I will see you guys in class, okay? Oh, and I almost forgot. Um, I do. I did want to give you an explanation of what not to do um, as far as turning in this assignment. Uh, what not to do, this is, um, let me get my brush size back down again. It's a scribbling size. Turn my flow down. Opacity back up. All right, good enough. Okay, so what I don't want to see is scratchy outlines. I don't want to see outlines at all, 
but this is this is how I used to draw before I went to art school. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily. I don't think any way is completely wrong if you can achieve results. Here's the thing: this takes a lot longer. Um, it's a little um, more likely to cause uh, problems with proportion and stuff like that. Um, maybe you've done it so long that you've mastered it and you could draw amazing drawings. That's great, but not for my class. For my class, I want this. I want I want the scribbling uh, with purpose. I want you. I want you. I want to see this sort of thing. And again, this this process is a lot. This is a lot easier for organic stuff. Um, when the scribbling with purpose works better for organics. This mechanical mechanical stuff tends to uh, benefit from this a little bit more than the scribbling. Um, it is what it is. Give me scribbles. I want to see. I want to see shape and form based on the scribbles. Uh, one thing I mentioned in, in class was that when you when you do this scribbling pur uh, with purpose thing, this is almost it starts to really almost imply a, a wireframe. If you've ever done any 3D modeling, the scribbles start to imply a wireframe so that you could see the shape of the forms. Um, if you were going to finish this project, if you were going to like really clean it up, you'd have to like erase a bit and clean up some of the uh, some of the surfaces that uh, you get too muddy and dark and because obviously there's lighting involved you have to get rid of the uh, the scribbles where the lighting is and whatever uh, point is for this class do not give me scratchy outlines don't give me don't even or don't give me line art in general I don't want to see any kind of line art um, even if you're like oh I did line art but then I shaded it I don't care. I don't want to see that. Uh, I don't want to see line art shading. None of that. That's that's just not what I'm trying to teach you. Uh, I want to teach you a different method. If you have this method nailed, cool, good for you. But that's not what I'm asking for for this assignment. I want to see loose, scribbly gesture stuff that you then can find the shapes and forms in the scribbles. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. Don't give me this. Don't give me this. Uh, give me give me this ideally um, if your proportions aren't perfect that's fine oh and I didn't um, didn't get around to showing you guys on this one I actually came out okay and I used the eraser more than anything um, so really quickly let me show you the marquee uh, marquee select or the uh, lasso tool if you will uh, there's lasso polygonal lasso magnetic all that fun stuff but the lasso tool right here third third button down uh, if you uh, let's say I don't know let's say his head was out of proportion. I can draw a little marquee selection lasso tool around his head, hit control T, and scale it up or down. Oops, I'm on the wrong layer. Uh, always keep track of, if you do have multiple layers, keep track of which layers you're on. Uh, let me just escape out of that, control D, clear that selection. Let me just delete this layer. I don't necessarily need it. Um, so just to, just to make illustrate my point, if you let's say marquee select the head just circle around it uh, hit control T now I can scale it up or down let's say I want he's like oh man he his head was way too big let me just scale it down scoot it over a bit hit enter hit control D to clear my selection now I can just clean up the the mess that I left behind from from that scale now he's got a smaller head uh, so hopefully that makes sense to you guys Again, you don't have to use any Photoshop tricks in terms of uh, cutting and pasting, re you know, moving stuff around, transforming. You don't have to use any of that if you're not as Photoshop savvy. I get it. Uh, the 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 critical thing is to use the, the sketching, uh, use Photoshop to learn how to sketch, uh, and then the Photoshop skills will come in time. It happens. It just takes a little while to get comfortable with it. Uh, so yeah, lasso tool, marquee select something. Control T to transform it, scoot it, move it around. Um, hold the Shift key if you want to like keep it from uh, squishing. And that's it. Um, if I think of any other tricks or tips for this, I will try to post more videos. But for now, this is the gist of it. Give me scribbling with purpose, not line art, not scratchy line stuff, not none of that. Uh, give me this. Okay. See you guys in class. Bye.